So I'm just, just quoting Raptors. They're happening. The Bible. <coughs> okay. Right. No, I can chat for a while then. Hi, welcome to uh, Underdogs, War Room Underdogs. Um, My brain is currently soup because I've been recording inside the Octagon today and that generally just melts my brain. Um, So I've got the fight card in front of me. I've got some notes. I'm going to keep track of all this that I want to talk about right now because I don't want to miss anything. Um, The first one I want to talk about is Tim Elliott. The reason I'm picking Tim Elliott is is a slight underdog, but he's got a lot of experience. He's he's 15, 9, and 1 is his record. But if you think back to his time on the Ultimate Fighter, he looked he looked great on the Ultimate Fighter all the way up until he fought DJ. And you know, everybody looks bad against Demetrius Johnson. Um he's also coming off I mean, I know I know he is coming off a loss. That tends to work against people in the in the odds and you know, picking favourites and underdogs and stuff, but it, it's a loss to, to Davis and Figueredo, who's fighting for the title next. So, you know, you kinda gotta you, you've got to forgive him a little bit for that. Yeah, he's got good wins over good fighters like Matt Schnell, Eric Shelton, Lewis Smolker, Mark De La Rosa. He's a veteran. He's got his, his experience. That's what I'm going back to. Um, and I know he's fighting Askar Askarov, who's he's undefeated. He's 10-0, and 0, but yeah, that last fight was a draw. I think there's some room for a veteran to push his way into this fight. So that would be a, my first interesting pick. Um, after that, I want to talk about Andre Feely. Same reasons. Uh, Sadiq Youssef is a, a thunderous puncher. Um, he steps in with all of his all of his weight, all of his power, but technically he's very nice as well. And he's got a nice variety of punches, which often backs people up and puts them against the fence, where he can just unload that barrage. Think of his his uh, fight against um, uh, Sumar Mokhtarian. Um He's fighting Andre Feely, who does get backed up against the fence. Um, but he is also very good at fighting long range, and if he can keep Sadiq Yusuf against, uh, uh, you know, away from him, using his long range strikes, his front kicks, his unorthodox movement, um, he's also taller, so there's also options for neck attacks. We know that the alpha male guys like neck attacks, so there's definitely some neck attacks in the arsenal of, of Andre Feely. Um, and you know, he's got double the experience, more than double the experience. You know, he's twenty and six. Um, he's on a two-fight win streak over, you know, Shaman Morais, who again is very good, an underrated fighter, and Miles Jury, who's good. So, you know, he's only got losses to people that are highly ranked, the likes of Rodriguez, uh, Calvin Cater, and Michael Johnson. So, um, I think he's also someone that's worth keeping an eye on. You know, experience does pay off, um, and in these high-pressure fights, this is a, a big card. It's the first card of the year, but it's a McGregor card. There's a lot of eyes on it. Um, fight week's going to be busy, so you know some of these fighters that are early in their career, they might be feeling it a little bit. And we've got a couple of fighters here that are 10, 11 fights into their career that are favourites, so that might be an interesting one to keep your eye on. Um, after that, you know, again we're going to veterans. I mean, that seems to be the theme of this one. Um, Macy Barber. Everybody's very hot on Macy Barber right now, and rightly so. She's she's 10 and 0. She's exciting. She, uh, sorry, she's 8 and 0. She's exciting. She's aggressive. She's in a division where she can really make some headway very quickly. Um, and, I mean, you know, the wins that she's got already, uh, particularly Gillian Robertson, who we've seen is, is to be, you know, to be a very, very good grappler. Um, she just looked dominant in that fight. She, she's she's a, clearly a heavy-handed fighter for this weight class, which is always a benefit. Um, even psychological, you know, the psychological advantage, getting in there with a fighter that knows that they could get knocked out, it does change the way that you fight a little bit. Um, Roxanne Modafferi, she's what, 23 and 16. That's a lot of experience. And in her last few performances, I feel like she's really turned a corner, um, partly due to the fact that uh, uh, Mike Pyle has been working with her, I think. Mike Pyle is a, a, an encyclopedia of MMA. And I think working with someone like Roxanne, who's a, a very good student, she's very, uh, yeah, very studious, very intelligent. She listens, she pays attention. I mean, she can speak a couple of languages. She's, you know, she's a sharp individual. Someone like Mike Pyle that's got all that information would just be able to download that uh, to Roxanne. And I think that, I mean, you know, she's up and down, but, the, you know, the people that she's beaten, Bob Honchak's got a lot of experience and is a good fighter as well. And that win over uh, Shevchenko, that's the kind of performance that she would need in this fight where 
she she you know weathers an early storm. She she you know she sees some some tough points in the fight, but then that that veteran experience shows through, and then she starts to find her way back in later in the fight. And it, and it's going to be the grappling, you know. A heavy puncher, someone that's used to stopping people, is going to be expecting to stop someone. And because Macy Barber is young and exciting and people expect her to be a knockout artist because that's what we've seen of her so far, um, there's a pressure on her to continue delivering that. And I think if Roxanne's smart enough to weather an early storm, there's a uh, there's a possibility that she can get the takedown and work that ground game that she's... Uh, I think she's a brown belt. She's very, very good on the ground. Um, so they are... They are my underdog, my undercard underdog picks. On the main card, uh, Anthony Pettis and uh, Donald Cerrone are both underdogs. I mean, Anthony Pettis, former lightweight champion, uh, he's taken on Diego Fajaya, who looks excellent in his last fight. I mean, Merbek Tysimov is, you know, he was one of my hot picks for prospect last year or the year before, I believe. Um, dominated him, looked looked incredible in a difficult situation, in a busy environment, uh, you know, a, a busy hectic environment that was very hot very humid you know you walk we're talking about Abu Dhabi obviously you're walking out the dressing rooms and into a, a sweltering hot environment then into an air-conditioned basically a, you know, like a huge you know purpose-built arena it was a very unusual environment for every single fighter on the card and Tysimov was the favorite and Fahea was just he was just dogged in his determination in that fight um, he's, a, he's a very very tough fighter to beat at the same time you've got Anthony Pettis, who's got all the skills in the world that can be put under pressure, that can be backed up against the fence, which is probably what's going to happen in this fight. I expect for her to be coming over the top with power shots and going underneath to try and take, get takedowns. Pettis has got a always underestimated ground game. He's got great arm bars um, and stuff off the fence that you just you just can't predict. You know, obviously the Showtime kick is the thing that we all know, but you think to the cat to the uh, the Wonder Boy fight, springing off the fence with that hook. Wonder Boy couldn't have predicted that, and he's one of those unpredictable fighters. So, I think Anthony Pettis is always, you know, a live dog in a fight. It doesn't matter who he's against or what weight class he's in. Um, and I think for his, he's wild, he's exciting. There are some holes in his game that can be exploited. Um, I'm trying to think back to the person that clipped him and knocked him out, Poirier. That was the fight I'm thinking back to. Like Poirier is a sharp striker, and and I can see opportunities for Pettis to really be impactful in this fight. Same thing with Cowboy. Obviously, McGregor's going to be a favourite in this fight because he's he's a superstar. He's got the biggest following in 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 the sport. Um, so a lot of people are going to be in, you know betting on McGregor just to be invested in the fight in some way. But we all know Cowboy. We all know what he's capable of. Um, we'll do a full war room on that, so you can get into that and you can really. Um, we, well, we're going to have a good chat about it. There's there's so many so many interesting factors in that fight, and there are lots of ways for Cowboy to win. Um, there is an Inside the Octagon which will be released. We're going to have a long chat about that fight, and we'll say long. We're, we're all hungry, so it might not, might not be that long, but we're going to have a chat about that fight and get into the details of it because there are a lot. But basically, Cowboy's got head kicks. He's got a record for head kicks. He's got 17 submissions on his record. Um, in his UFC debut back in 2011, he was under pressure um, against a power puncher in Paul Kelly, a guy that was really putting his strikes together well, and Cowboy took him down, took his back and choked him out. That's the kind of performance I could expect from Cowboy, being under pressure, being backed up against the fence against an aggressive McGregor that's trying to land that left hand and then smothering him, taking him down and being the bigger man and either catching him in the clinch on the way out uh, with, you know, with one of those head kicks or one of those elbows or knees or being able to control him on the ground, being the slightly bigger man and, uh, you know, working his, his submissions, arm bars, triangles, probably rear naked chokes. Um, Cowboy's a good bet. So, underdog picks, in short. Cowboy, Pettis, Roxanne Modafferi, Andre Feely, and Tim Elliott. Enjoy.